These types of people should never keep parrots. Are you one of them? Stick around and find out. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, controversial topic, people who I think shouldn't keep parrots. There are so many stories we get told, there's so much footage we get, we see, and there's just basically some people whose lifestyles aren't suitable to keep parrots. So I thought I would do a video covering those people. I've done it in a more gentle way in the past. This time I'm going to be a little bit more brutal and a little bit more honest because it is really annoying. And these guys do deserve the best life. And if you're not equipped for it, that's cool. Maybe consider another pet or getting them in the future when you are. So let's start with the first one. People who aren't settled and people who travel lots. If you're traveling around loads and you want to go on plenty of lots of holidays, and you just basically your life's constantly in flux because maybe you're going to uni or things are changing then maybe parrots aren't the best pet for you there are certain situations where you can get around this perhaps you have a partner who can look after them who loves them too or maybe your parents are interested that sort of thing but generally if you are solely responsible for that parrot and you want to travel you need to travel for work etc then parrots are not the right pet for you because they need lots of time you can't just leave them in the cage with loads of food i, I hear people doing that lots and it's just no good so remember, if you're, if you're settled down, great. If you're traveling lots, maybe once you settle down, that'll be a great time to get one. This one really grinds on me, and that's people who don't actually see them as living creatures who deserve any respect, you know. People who basically see them as accessories, just things to sit in a cage, and that they should do what they want, when they want, you know. Like, I'm the human, I'm the boss. If you don't comply with me, then what's the point of you? You know, it may sound a bit hokey, but Every living creature deserves their own space on this planet, you know, and if you're actively taking one into your home, then I think you'd have the mindset that you want to look after them, you want to be your friend, you want them to do really well, rather than forcing them to comply, showing them no respect, and just generally treating them like, as I said, an accessory. You know, if you want an accessory, you can get loads of plushy parrots out there, they're awesome. You want a real one, you're gonna have to adapt to the fact that they're not always gonna do what you want them to do. And that leads on to my next point, and that is people who expect their parrots to do what they want them to do with no incentive. So that means no training, no nothing. They basically just expect their parrots to do what they want all the time. And that's without reward and just basically like, yeah, so I want you to step off immediately. I want you to do this. I want you to do all these lovely tricks and sing and stuff. But I'm not prepared to reward you for it. I'm not prepared to find out what your rewards are. I'm not really prepared to do anything. How does that work, you know? If you want to train me to do something, I need training, you know? I know it's the modern world where people are expected to just know everything and do everything immediately, but it doesn't work that way. They need training, they need incentive, you know? You need to give them something to motivate them. And often, that needs to be a little bit more than attention. It needs to be a high value treat to get them going. Again, neatly leading on to my next one, people with no time. It kind of relates to the first one, but if you are constantly busy, constantly working, Again, maybe it's not the right pet for you. If you can adapt, and I'll talk about that a bit later, if you can, if you are very busy and working, but you can make the time for them, you know, make the time for the training session in the morning, make the time later on, then maybe we can exclude this one. Because I know a lot of you who watch my channel do have time pressures, but at the same time, all of you make the effort. So if you have no time for your parrot, then they have no time for you and you shouldn't be keeping them. You know, having time is very important. And me and Sophie say it should be quality time. If you have less, that time needs to be a much higher quality. If you have more, it still needs to be high quality, basically. I love how these all roll into each other, it's perfect. Next one, people with no patience. If you have no patience, you lose your temper really quickly because your parrot's not doing what you want, or you know you can't catch them because you've got a rescue and you thought it'd be easy, but it's not, and they won't go back in a cage, and you really need to go out really bad choice because sometimes you're going to have those situations and they will try your patience these guys try our patience on a regular basis and you can't like lash out at them they're only small little parrots you know you shout at them okay they're probably gonna get overstimulated by that or at worst be fearful of you so you need to have a lot of patience with these guys with training with husbandry with everything and i think that excludes quite a lot of people honestly i mean i have not got a lot of patience for a lot of things but when it comes to our parrots I try and hold it in check and I keep my patience high. This is something that you can acquire as a skill as a person, by the way. Patience isn't something you're just born with, it's something you just have to learn, basically. You have to learn to let things slide, you have to learn to just keep going when things are difficult. And that's very important with these guys. Just as a personal example, I don't think we'd have achieved anything, or anywhere near as much with our rescues, if me and Sophie didn't have, well, 
oodles of patience, you know. It's taken such a long time for Kipling to get to the point where we're having lots of fun and playing together rather than him destroying me. And again, with parrots, you just don't have a time scale. You don't know if things are going to be sorted quickly or if they're going to take ages. So that's why patience is so important. Another one, really important, people who can't adapt. And that means who can't adapt their lifestyles, who can't change their ways of living to accommodate the parrot. And again, it, these kind of points all relate to each other to form a picture of a person who really isn't suitable for parrots. Because if you can't adapt your lifestyle, you don't have the patience to change, you don't want to change your traveling, you know, you don't want to do the extra training, it all fits in together. A lot of people, for example, who don't have much time, adapt their lifestyles to make the time for their parrots, you know, and that feeds into the respect, you know, because they have respect for their parrots, they care for them, they want them to do the best in their environment. And adaptation doesn't just mean adapting your lifestyle, although that's very important, you know, you can't have your candles anymore, you can't have your air fryer, which we would love to have, but we can't because it's unsafe for them. You've got to be careful of the windows, visitors, all sorts of things. But you also have to be constantly learning and adapting. You can't just sort of um, get a viewpoint and entrench yourself in there. And I see this often with certain training um, elements, especially really outdated rubbish ones like, you know, beak pinching and stuff like that, or diet where people get entrenched in this mindset. They're not willing to learn. We've been, me and Sophie have been constantly learning. We've been thinking, we've been criti criticizing, we've been asking questions. And that's how we feel. We've got to this point where we do quite a good job for our parrots. Is it perfect? No, but we're constantly adapting and trying to change. And I'm not saying you're going to have to literally throw everything out the window. There are some middle, there is some middle ground here, but you do have to be able and willing to adapt. And just to finish this ranty video on a slightly less controversial one, that is people who don't like mess. These guys are messy. They will throw food everywhere. They will go to the toilet when they want. You know, they don't have the same boundaries we do for that sort of thing. And it's not very healthy to stop them from doing so. They will chew things. They will make mess and that's natural for them. And again, you have to be prepared to deal with that. You know, we constantly hoover. We constantly scrub the carpet to keep it clean. You know, we're constantly wiping walls. We're cleaning cages, just cleaning. And if you watch any channel about parrots, any half decent one, they will tell you there's constant cleaning involved and you have to be prepared to do that, you know. Um, I'm sorry, but if you don't, if you want a really tidy house, then I just, I just can't see them fitting in there very well. I, you know, the seed catches don't work very well. There's always gonna be some mess. So if mess is a bad thing, steer clear of them. Get something much less messy. So guys, that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you found it entertaining. And if you are one of these sorts of people, you weren't offended, by this video and instead thought, well, maybe I can change that aspect of it, or maybe I will get a parrot at another point or another sort of pet. These videos aren't really intended to just call people out or insult them. It's more about I want parrots and the humans who look after them to have the best life possible and just do really well. If you have any comments, preferably non-aggressive ones, please drop them down below. But in the meantime, from me and a fairly well-behaved fish and chip, take care and see you later.